to have this press conference so we could discuss the issues in case you have any questions. Uh, and they're all kind of connected. Uh, and just so that you know, uh, in Texas, the sheriff is mainly responsible for running the county jail. And in El Paso, being a bigger city, uh, the vast majority of the employees in this agency work in the jail. We have about 580 uh, detention officers, plus we have civilian staff and support staff from other county departments like maintenance. We have outside vendors that provide services in the jail like UMC and EHN, Aramark, and so it's a pretty big operation. <clears throat> every year, uh, the Texas Commission on Jail Standards inspects every jail in Texas. And they're the regulatory agency to ensure that we're following the state rules and guidelines on jail operations. Uh, it's a surprise inspection. They just show up out of the blue. And they showed up on Monday. And they finished their inspection yesterday. And we passed uh, without any deficiencies. And that really goes to the hard work of the men and women uh, that work in our facilities that um, really provide and support uh, the safety of our community. You know, we talk about El Paso being a safe community, and we see the officers on the street, and sometimes we forget about all the other components of the criminal justice system, including the jail, where we hold some pretty dangerous people, uh, people who are charged with major crimes. You know, we have the August 3rd shooter here, uh, we have the individual who shot and killed Peter Herrera here. We have cartel members and, and uh, gang members here. So there are some very dangerous people. And then on top of that, of course, <coughs> we have uh, people coming and going, a lot of them dealing with mental illness, and that puts a significant strain on the system because we're not a uh, mental health facility, but a lot of times individuals going through crisis, uh, mental health crisis will commit a crime and then they end up in our jail and then we're having to deal with it. Uh, and it can be very difficult. So that being said, again, I, 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 I can't overemphasize the great work that's done day in and day out uh, by the employees, the men and women who work in our jail facilities. And again, about how dangerous it could be and that played out yesterday. So yesterday <coughs> at about 3.45 a.m., there was an incident that occurred when one of our detention officers was coming back from a medical run. So while we have UMC providing medical care in the facility, there are times when we have to transport inmates outside the jail uh, to get uh, testing or to see a specialist for whatever health condition they might have. We have to provide some minimum level of medical care. So on the way back, uh, in a march unit, the female officer in uniform, armed, we use armed detention officers for these transports, had a female inmate in the back uh, by the name of Diana Herrera. And we have her mugshot here. And I believe her date of birth is July, is it July 15? July, I have it here somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, July 25th, 1992. She was in our facility for robbery and uh, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And on the way back uh, from a medical appointment, traveling east on Montana, approaching Joe Battle, uh, the inmate was able to slip uh, out of her shackles and there is a plexiglass divider in the car between the inmate in the back seat and the officer in the front seat. However, because of the heat yesterday and there's no vents in the back, the officer uh, had opened a pass-through window in the middle of that plexiglass to allow the air conditioner to get into the back seat. Well, the inmate used that opportunity to reach through, grab the officer's gun. There was a struggle. The inmate was able to get the gun out of the holster. There was a fight over the gun. The officer was able to stop the vehicle 
uh, and put it in park so there was no accident. Uh, they're struggling over the weapon. The officers got the weapon by uh, the slide um, and the trigger gets pulled by the inmate. But the weapon is close to the officer's face and as the weapon discharges, um, either, we don't know yet, we're still investigating this, either a bullet, the bullet hit her lip and went through the windshield or the pressure from the release caused the injury to the lip. Uh, but the officer did, did sustain an injury to the lip as well as being hit in the head uh, with the butt of the gun. Um, the fight continued. Uh, the inmate was able to get her arm around the neck of the officer. Um, luckily, there was a off-duty customs officer behind her who saw what was going on, ran up, pulled his weapon, and stopped the assault. So uh, the inmate uh, is still in custody, was never able to escape, was additionally charged with attempted capital murder and booked on a $1 million bond. Um, <clears throat> so I'm very, very proud of the officer's actions in trying to prevent this inmate from escaping, holding on to the weapon, fighting, trying to keep that weapon out of the inmate's control. This could have been a disaster for the public had that inmate gotten free. But the officer fought. Uh, she ended up in the hospital but was released last night. She'll, she'll be recovering. So no, no uh, uh, injuries that were uh, life-threatening. But, but a clearly a traumatic incident and shows again how dangerous it is for our jailers who come to work every day dealing with individuals who would do something like this. And also I'm very proud of the customs agent uh, who off-duty stopped to help uh, this detention officer. And so uh, we're not going to be releasing the name of the officer or the customs officer right now, but we will at a later time. Um, does anybody have any questions about that incident? I have another thing to talk about, or the inspection. If he was named for Julio Sanchez? No, at the uh, jail annex. She's in our annex, yeah. the in, in custody of the, of the sheriff's office for state charges. Yes, sir. Do you think that the board just her the We don't know. We don't know. She's got a, a, a significant injury to the bottom of her lip on the right side, and we don't know if the bullet grazed it as it went out the front windshield or if it was the pressure of the, of the round going off. That's still under investigation. The officer was alone. Yes. Yeah, she was by herself, which is typical. Yeah. Would you consider, I mean, obviously there's a lot that goes into this, to figure out what happened and stuff like that. So at this point, would you consider having two officers in the <coughs> well, well, I think there's other, we're certainly going to look at the entire event, as we do any time something like this happens, to, to determine what we can do to make it safer for our officer and safer for the public, too. We don't want an inmate escaping out into the public. Uh, so we're going to be looking at the holster, how, how the inmate was able to get that out so easily. Uh, that shouldn't happen. Um, a holst not, not all holsters are the same. And uh, for an inmate to be able just to pull it out of the holster, th there's a problem there. We're also going to be looking at those pass-through windows and what we can do to secure those. And, we'll, and certainly there are cases where we do use two officers if we have an inmate who's designated as an escape risk. But in this one, we had no indication uh, that this inmate was going to be a problem. And just to clarify really quickly, the inmate got out, for, so they were in the back and made their way to the front. And that's how they were able to get out of the vehicle? No, the inmate never got out of the car. Okay. No. She All was able to reach, the vehicle. yes, she was able to reach through the pass-through, grab the gun, and hit the officer with the butt of the weapon. As the officer was holding on to the weapon, it discharged. Right. Since the weapon was discharged, is there any uh, investigation to that? I'm not sure how that works. Well, we're investigating the incident, but it's not a, a shooting review team because the officer didn't discharge the weapon, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, that's what I mean. yeah. Okay. 
And then lastly, again, to, to kind of uh, shine a light on the good work of our detention uh, facility and its employees, I have here 